When you're beginning to work with Adobe Illustrator and starting to create your new projects, sometimes it's tough to know how to get started. So in this demonstration, I'm going to walk us through setting up a postcard intended for print. We're going to use a standard 6 by 4 inch postcard size. I'm going to set this up using two artboards. We will denote safety zones as well as the bleed settings, and then we'll discuss the Postal Service requirements. And actually, the Postal Service requirements might be a good place to start in understanding what we're dealing with. You can download Postal Service requirements from many, many places on the web. I just did a search on postcard postal regulations, and I actually found this one at 48hourprint.com. And it's a template that I was able to download. If we look at the site, you can scroll down and see that there are a number of templates that they supply in order for you to download and begin working. I just downloaded the postcard with mailing services 4x6. I clicked on the folder and downloaded the file. So now we can see what we're dealing with. The back side of the postcard has some regulation areas that we cannot add any sort of a design response. This area is indicated for the indicia or where the stamp would go. The mailing address area must be kept blank and also you have to leave a zone at the bottom in order for the post office to apply a barcode sticker or other post office markings. So now that we kinda know what we're dealing with in the back, you can also see that the trim line is set up for the postcard at a 6 by 4 inch zone and then there's an eighth of an inch bleed all the way around. How would we set that up for ourselves? Well, let's begin by going File New. Now I'm going to start this new document and I'm going to give it kind of a meaningful name, Postcard, but I'm going to use my last name. So this is my postcard and I'm not going to choose any sort of profile because I'm going to set up a custom profile. Now I can select the number of artboards here and in this case we're going to do front and back of postcard so I'm going to select two. Now there can be a number of arrangements of these postcards and I'm actually going to have this in one horizontal row going across like so. And I'd like to set up the spacing in between the two artboards to a half inch. And you can type this in physically or you can use the little indicators here. Or you can use the little, um, the little menu. Either way. Setting up the units of measure is easy and that is set right here. We're going to use inches intended for print as opposed to pixels which we might choose for a web project of some sort and the width and height are set here. You can type them in manually. So, you know, you could do a 4 by 6 postcard and notice how the orientation is a vertical orientation. In our case, we would like to do a 6 by 4. So I'm going to type in manually 6 by 4 and you can see that it changed the orientation now to a landscape or horizontal. Setting the bleed, you can use this to scroll through a number of, diff of different sizes for setting the bleed, but it's important that you make sure that this link is checked. It links all of them so that all of the measurements for the bleed are equal around all four sides. Now this right now is set for a quarter inch bleed. I'd like to set it for an eighth of an inch bleed. So with this link indicated, I'm going to type in 0.125 and notice how it sets all four at the same time. So that's pretty handy. Your advanced settings can be toggled here. We're going to use the color mode of CMYK in, in, for, for print as opposed to RGB which would be if we were working on a web project or something else. And the raster effects I'm going to set at their highest setting, 300 ppi, meaning that if this is intended to print, the minimum standard for resolution would be 300 ppi. Keeping preview mode set to default and 
I don't need to check in this case aligning the new objects to the pixel grid. That might be helpful if I was building a web page or something where alignments were very, very important. And we'll use these settings. Once we're happy with what we've got, you click OK. The new document shows the two artboards side by side with a half inch in between. So looking at the postal regulations, we noticed that there was a trim line, there was a safe zone, and there was a bleed. In our document, the bleed is indicated by the red line going around the artboard. Now think of artboards as two areas for working rather than two separate pages. I'd also like to bring up my rulers under View, Rulers, Show Rulers. And this is going to help me to create guidelines. I'm going to create my own guidelines for knowing where the safe zone will be. And the safe zone, when I say safe zone, it means the area of design where all the important information must fit within. In other words, you wouldn't want to cut off a logo or a title or something very important. You wouldn't want to risk that falling into the, the trim line. So the safe zones we're going to set up for about a quarter inch from top, bottom, and side. And I just do this by clicking on the ruler and dragging a guideline to a quarter inch. And you can see that by where it lands on the ruler. And I click and drag to place the guidelines, like so. Once those guidelines are set, I can create a trim area. So my trim area is indicated here. That's the 6x4 actual postcard that we're building. Now I don't necessarily need to have a stroke, so I can turn that, that setting off. I can also choose an innocuous color for that zone that is the actual postcard size. And now what I'd like to do is create the safe zone. So I'm going to create a new rectangle by using the guidelines I just created. I click and drag from one edge of the guidelines to the others. And I can kind of feel that Illustrator wants to snap to those guidelines. And I can set a color here to indicate the safe design area. Um, you can actually have this you know, the snapping or the smart guides turned on. Right now I have smart guides turned on and um, that's also helping me to see exactly where things are aligned. As I run my cursor across the bleed area, for example, smart guides are turned on and it highlights creating this bright green indication, indicating that I have rolled over something that's important. In this case, that's the bleed line. So now I have this area set up, ready for me to create some fantastic design on the front of the postcard. Moving to the back of the postcard, I would really like to set a non-printing layer as well that indicates and lets me know the areas where I can't add any artwork according to the postal regulations. So I'll go back to my postal regulations and I'm going to select this nice template that they have provided for me. I'm going to copy it and go back to my postcard and here I will paste command V so I used a command C, or that would be control C in the Windows environment, and now a command V or control V in the Windows environment. And I can place this handy dandy postal regulations that they have given to me. So now I know that I can only add a design response into these areas here. And that may be just a small a small logo or some sort of line work, something very simple that I might allow, because we want to allow for some type of message to be written within this space and for the address to be written within that space. Now that I've set up my non-printing areas, if I bring up window and layers, 
I can actually lock the non-printing areas and I can call this non-print and lock that layer. Then I can create a new layer using my layers panel where I'll place my own artwork. And I have a pretty good setup now for the Anderson postcard and I'm pretty happy with what I've got going on. Now at least I know the areas that I'm dealing with and I'm ready to create my design. And this concludes the introduction to setting up for a 6x4 postcard.